Upon occasion, the Prophet ﷺ was walking through the streets of Medina and he saw Hussein radiallahu anhu playing with a group of children and he began to run after him. And Hussein would run this way and the Prophet ﷺ would run after him. Hussein would run out that way and Rahmatul Alameen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would run after him until finally he caught him, he embraced him and he kissed him. Who else other than Hussein had the honor of the Prophet ﷺ lifting his garment and kissing him upon his navel? Who else other than Hussein radiallahu anhu had the honor of the Prophet ﷺ saying, Hussein is from me and I am from Hussein. Who else other than Hassan and Hussein had the honor of the Prophet ﷺ saying that your houses will be opposite my house in Jannah. Who else other than Hassan and Hussein had the honor of the Prophet ﷺ saying that on the day of judgment, in the hereafter that you will be the leaders of all the youth in Jannah. Whoever wants to see a man from the men of paradise, let him look to Hussein ibn Ali. For indeed I heard the Prophet saying that sallallahu In the shade of the Kaaba and he would see Hussein and he would say, this one is the most beloved person on earth to the ones in the heavens today. On one very special day in the streets of Medina, our Prophet وسلم, came out and he was wearing a coat made of black wool and then his grandson Hassan عن, came and he entered that coat of his and then Hussein عن, came and entered with him and then Fatima came in and also entered with them and then Ali also came and he entered that coat with them. And then the Prophet recited, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Indeed, Allah wants to cleanse you from impurities, O Ahl al Bayt, O household of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and purify you. And so, upon the death of Ali, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu, Hassan, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu, on the 41st of Hijrah for six months, he became the Khalifa. So the way he decided to join between the hearts is by saying that I am going to resign as the Khalifa. So he resigned as the Khalifa and he appointed Muawiyah as the Khalifa. So for 20 years, the reign of Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu lasted, alhamdulillah, until the year 60 after Hijrah. When we come towards the end of the life of Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and he decided to make his son Yazid the Khalifa. Those who were in the Sham region, they were already used to leadership from Banu Umayyah and they were okay with that. But those in the Hijaz, people like Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Zubair, and the Ahlul Bayt, those contingent around Hussein ibn Ali, refused to give the Bay'ah, the oath of allegiance to Yazid ibn Muawiyah. And so Yazid would send his governor Walid ibn Utbah to Mecca and Medina to force the people, to compel the people to give that oath of allegiance, but they refused. And amongst them who refused was Hussein ibn Ali. He just couldn't stomach the idea of giving the oath of allegiance to Yazid ibn Muawiyah. So the people of Kufa then are ever eager and they're sending these letters to Hussein ibn Ali and they want him to come to Kufa so that they can give him authority and they can give him support what Hussein ibn Ali decides, in fact, is to send his cousin Muslim ibn Aqil. Why don't you go to Kufa and you investigate the situation? I'm receiving thousands of letters, but is it really true that I have a support base in Kufa? Ali ibn Abi Talib, of course, moved the center of the Khilafah from Medina to Iraq. And so he had authority there. And they knew, of course, this is the son of Ali. So in his mind, he's thinking, well, maybe it is true that the people would want to support me over there. Muslim ibn Aqil, he lives in the month of Dhul Qa'dah. And when he goes to Kufa, he discovers that there are thousands of people. From 12,000, the number rose to 18,000 people who were ready in his eyes and his mind to support Hussein ibn Ali. And they gave this allegiance to Hussein ibn Ali at the hands of Muslim ibn Aqil, that if he came here, we would support him and we would assist him and we would make him our leader. 
Muslim ibn Aqil pens a letter back to Hussein ibn Ali in Medina and the letter comes back to Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, and it's with the good news that we have a big support base in here if you came the people would support you Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, decided to leave Medina and go to Kufa and to take his family with him Yazid suspects something he doesn't know quite what it is but he suspects something so as a precautionary step he decides to replace the governor of Kufa and he was initially Nu'man ibn Bashir the great companion of the Prophet Sallallahu may Allah be pleased with him and to replace him with Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad and he was known because Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad was in the army of Ali in the battle of Sifin and his father Ziyad was appointed as governor of Basra by Ali ibn Abi Talib himself but he was ruthless and he was cruel On one particular day, this new governor of Kufa, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, this was now in the month of Dhul Hijjah, he goes into the streets of Kufa and he's wearing a turban. And he takes the end of that turban and he wraps it around his face. So no one could see who he was exactly. And when he came out, he came out with 17 men. It looked like a prestigious entourage. And the people of Kufa, when they first saw that, they thought that must be Hussein ibn Ali, who has now arrived from Medina. And so they went to greet him. Welcome, O grandson of the Prophet. And he was about 55 years old by this time, Hussein ibn Ali. But then they realized they had just made a fatal error. What Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad did initially was he sent one of his servants, go to the streets of Kufa, and I want you just to sit and keep an eye on things. Watch who comes in, who goes out. Where is Muslim ibn Aqil? Where is Hussein ibn Ali? It is your responsibility. Go and find where these people are. He discovers Muslim ibn Aqil is in the quarter of, of Al-Asadi. And in the quarter of Hani ibn Urwa. And he goes back and he reports to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad that this is where Muslim ibn Aqil is. On one particular day, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, so he sends a, a big contingent of people with weapons and they go to that house of Hani ibn Urwa and they encircle it and they want Muslim ibn Aqil to be taken prisoner. When they go in, they discover that Muslim ibn Aqil is not there, but the one who is there is Hani ibn Urwa himself and they take him and they take him prisoner. When Muslim ibn Aqil discovers that Hani ibn Urwa has been taken prisoner, he now puts his people to the test. Here you are, O oh people of Kufa, with your claims of support and your claims of allegiance and your claims of power and support and everything else. And here is one of our loyal supporters who has been taken prisoner. He says, I need your help. We will march to the palace of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad and we will request for Hani ibn Urwa to be released. We will make that request. And 4,000 people joined him. And they said, that's a good idea. And so he takes that force with him. Ibn Ziyad petitions the tribal leaders, the elders. Go and tell the people. Tell the fathers to dissuade their sons. Tell the mothers to dissuade their sons. And so the fathers are now saying things like, listen, there are enough people with Muslim Ibn Aqil. You don't have to put your neck on the line. In the morning, he left with a big contingent of 4,000 people. But that number began to reduce. By the afternoon, it was around 400. By Maghrib time, it was 30. He led 10 people in Salah. By the time the prayer was finished, there was no one behind him. They became observers, my dear brothers. Muslim ibn Aqil is by himself in the streets of Kufa, and all of his supporters have deserted him. 
What does he do? He walks around, he's trying to evade people like the authorities, if you want to call them that, who want him to be taken to Ibn Ziyad. He finds one home, he knocks on the door, an old woman answers the door and he simply says, I'm very thirsty, I need water. Is there any water for a guest, please? And so she brings him in and she gives him some water and she asks or inquires about him and she realizes this is Muslim Ibn Aqil and she's overjoyed that we have someone in our home from the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she was so eager for her son to return home so she could share the good news with her son. We have someone in our home from the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not knowing of course her son was treacherous. For when that son did come home and she shared that great news with him, the son had one thing in my mind. You wait till the morning, I will be first thing out of bed and I will run to the fort of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad and I will inform him where Muslim ibn Aqil is and I will take a payment for that. Muslim ibn Aqil was there. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad sent a very, very big force of people and they encircled that house of that woman and he was brought out and he was arrested and he was taken to the fort of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad on the 9th of Dhul Hijjah. But Ibn Ziyad executed both Hani ibn Urwa and Muslim ibn Aqil and decapitated them. Hussein ibn Ali has no idea what's happening in Kufa. But before Muslim ibn Aqil had been arrested, he did write a letter back. The people of Kufa, they lied to me and they lied to you. And he's telling him, don't come. But he never receives that letter. He leaves for Kufa on the 8th of Dhul Hijjah. And Muslim ibn Aqil and Hani ibn Urwa are killed on the 9th of Dhul Hijjah. And he has no idea what's happening. But before he leaves, because the news has now reached the other great companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they come along, Abdullah ibn Abbas can't even be patient. I'm struggling. And I'm fearful about this disastrous decision of yours. They betrayed your father, Ali ibn Abi Talib. But he says, I know that you are a good advisor to me. I know that. But I've made my decision to go. And I will take my family and you know, I don't think anything will happen to me. My cousin, if you are truly adamant in going, then don't go with your women and your children. Because I'm fearful you will be killed like Uthman was killed and his women and his child are looking at him. Who comes then? Or Abu Sa'id al-Khudri comes next. He said, look, Hussein, I will tell you something. I had your dad say, these people who claim that they support you, they have no resolve and they have no patience with the sword and they will betray you. But still Hussein ibn Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, is confident about his decision. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri then leaves. Who comes next? Abdullah ibn Umar. I, I bid you farewell. I, I wish you the protection of Allah from being killed. He had this very strong belief that Hussein is not going to come back alive. And those companions who were old and they were experienced and they knew the situation and they lived with Ali ibn Abi Talib with Hussein's father and they were close to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They're advising him, don't go to Kufa. But still, may Allah be pleased with him, Hussein ibn Ali, he went along with his family, 72 of them women and children and some supporters and he goes to Kufa when he arrives in Kufa he discovers that there is no Muslim Ibn Aqil he died a long time ago there is no Hani Ibn Urwa for he has also died a long time ago now 
And where are those 18,000 people from the people of Kufa who claimed that they would support him? Where have they suddenly all vanished into thin air? For he couldn't see it anywhere. And here he is, the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The only living grandson of a prophet alive. And he's stranded. And so he has three claims, three petitions. He says to them, look, I am happy to go back. I will go back to Medina. Or I will fight fi sabilillah in one of the frontier lands of Islam and I will die like that, killed shaheed by the permission of Allah. Or allow me to go to Yazid himself and I will petition my claim to him. They refused, rejected all of them. Neither will you go home, neither will you leave this vicinity and nor will you have a chance to go and meet Yazid yourself because they wanted to compel him to give that bay'ah, that oath of allegiance to Yazid ibn Muawiyah. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad sends an army headed by Hur ibn Yazid, an army of 1,000 to go and compel Hussein ibn Ali to give that bay'ah for Yazid. Hur ibn Yazid, he was made of a different kind of substance. For indeed when he went to Hussein ibn Ali, he kind of kept the distance from him. He tried his best not to get too close to him. He would follow him. If he went right, he went right. If he went left, he went left. But still, he would keep a bit of a distance from him. Until he spoke and said, Oh Hussein, do not make Allah test me with the family of Muhammad Do not make Allah test me with the family of Muhammad Hussein ibn Ali says, May your mother be bereaved of you. Hur ibn Yazid says, you know, if it was anyone other than you, I would have taken revenge against you. But what can I say about your mother when she is Sayyida to Nisa al Alami? <laughs> Fatim bint Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa When she is the leader of the women, what can I say about your mother? And Hur ibn Yazid, you know, he had a this inclination, he didn't truly want to be part of that thing, but it was so difficult for him to break ties completely. And Ibn Ziyad sensed that. And so he sent a larger force of 4,000 people headed by Umar ibn Sa'ad. You go. And you know, if you don't go, then these lands of yours that I'm giving to you, they will go to others like Shimr ibn Dil Joshan and other people. They were happy to do my work and to take the land if you don't go. And here you have those who will do the evil, commit the injustice because of promises of dunya. And so he was happy to do the deal. And he goes off with his army of 4,000 people. Hussein ibn Ali is stranded. He can't leave because Ibn Ziyad is blocking the roots and he's enclosing Kufa. So it's difficult for people to come in and it's tough for them to go out. But he's trying to allow them a few days, extra days. He's taking advice from those who are with him. What is it that I'm supposed to do in this situation? But also strengthening them. Here they are in the tough hour. In the hour of difficulty, in the hour of hardship. What do you do? Until the forces of Ibn Ziyad are mounting up. Another 1,000 of Hussein ibn Numair, another one. And then another 1,000, then 4,000 of Umar ibn Sa'ad. Thousands of people are preparing for this encounter with what? A group of 72 people? Among some women, among some children? And at the head of all of them, the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And how could that happen? And how could that happen? until it comes to the ninth of Muharram. 
and he realizes, look, there is going to be no more extension to our days. They won't have patience anymore. They are ever eager to engage in us in battle. And so he speaks to his people. He began by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For all praise is due to him. And by thanking him and praising him, whether in the hardship or in the ease, whether in those days of relaxation or in those days of hardship. Know Allah in the ease and Allah will know you in hardship. Know Allah in the ease and Allah will know you in hardship. And I praise you that you made us from this family, the head of whom was the Prophet. And blessed us with prophethood, this family, this ummah. And you taught us Quran. Hussein ibn Ali is telling his people, do not forget the blessing. We are still from the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And we thank Allah that Allah gave us hearing and seeing and heart, my dear brothers. He says to his people, look, I think our day with the enemy will be tomorrow. This night has now come upon you, so make it beautiful. <laughs> and show some degree of brotherhood and affinity for one another. Take the hands of one another. We didn't come here to cause an aggression, but they refuse us to go back. And they're bent on warfare, they're bent on killing us. What else can we possibly do? And then Hussein went further on and he began to say, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. And they said, Hussein, what's wrong? He said, I've seen an angel in the form of a rider and he has told me that the army is coming and death awaits you. And they said, Hussein, what do you say? What do you see? Upon the second time, he said, I have seen the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he saw a dream. And the only thing which woke him up was that his sister Zainab radiallahu anha, she came out running and screaming because the enemies were advancing. And upon that night, Hussein radiallahu anhu, he gathered all his men and he said, Oh, people know that the only man they want is me. So why don't you all go back? Why don't you all go back and leave me? They said, saying, there is no life for us after you. And then he turned to the family of Muslim Ibn Aqil and he said, Oh, Muslim, your family has given the sacrifice because his Muslim has been martyred. Why don't you go back? And they said, Oh, Hussein, what will the people say? That you left your master, that you left your sheikh, that you left your cousin because you wanted to live in this dunya? They said, I, we swear by Allah, this can never happen. For we will die with you. We will give our lives, we will give our families, and we will give our wealth. And if it means dying with you, we will die with you. <laughs> And the first person to come out of the family of Hussein radiallahu anhu was Ali al-Akbar. He was the oldest son of Hussein radiallahu anhu. He was 19 years old at that time. And he came out and he fought like a lion. Because he was who? He was the grandson of Ali radiallahu anhu. And he was the family of Hamza radiallahu anhu. And he fought like a lion until they cut off his hands and they struck him. And when he was breathing his last, Hussein radiallahu anhu took him in his arms and he said, Oh my son, on the day of judgment, your grandfather, the Prophet ﷺ, will bear witness to your shahadat. And then the cousins of the Prophet ﷺ moved forward. And these weren't ordinary people, these were Sahabis. These were men who fought side by side with the Prophet ﷺ. And four of them came until they were martyred. And then Qasim, the son of Hassan radiallahu anhu, came forward. And he was a very beautiful young man. And he fought until they struck him over the head. And when they struck him over the head, he said, Ya Amma! He said, Oh my uncle! And Hussain radiallahu anhu ran forward and he took him in his arms and he said, Oh my son, today your uncle is so incapacitated that he cannot reply to your call because his enemies are many and his friends are few. But I swear by Allah that after this day, you will not need to call upon anybody. 
and then one by one the family of Hussein radiallahu anhu were martyred until there were only two people left Abbas radiallahu anhu and Hussein radiallahu anhu and then they martyred Abbas and then Hussein radiallahu anhu fought he fought bravely but for three days he hadn't tasted a sip of water and he fought as brave as he could but for three days he had a taste of a sip of water until finally he retreated and he went into his camp and he had a young child a young son called abdullah and he knew his time was up and he took his son in his arms and he began to kiss him and he began to embrace him and one of the kufan they shot an arrow and the arrow hit abdullah in the neck and hussein radiallahu anhu he put abdullah to the floor and he lifted his hands to the sky and he said Allahumma sabbirna ala al-qadha Allahumma sabbirna ala al-qadha Allahumma sabbirna ala al-qadha he said oh Allah give us sabr upon your decree oh Allah give us sabr upon your decree a man who's in this state but he's still turning towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of the kufan mentions and I swear by Allah I have never seen a man as brave as Hussein for bodies are lying all around him but he's sitting there as con as any man could be. Why? Because he knew he was destined for Jannah. He knew that Jannah was minutes away. And uh, Abdullah ibn Jabir radiallahu anhu, upon occasion, he was sitting with his students and Hussein radiallahu anhu walked past and he said, if you want to see a man who's about the Jannah, then look at this man. Because I swear by Allah, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying that Hussein's about is Jannah. And his kufan says that never in my life have I seen a man who was brave as this man is because he knew his abode was Jannah. And then Hussein radiallahu anhu, he stood up and there was a river close by because he knew his time was up. And he walked toward the river to drink some water. And one of the kufan, they shot an arrow and it hit Hussein radiallahu anhu, and he fell to the floor. And when he fell to the floor, the kufan surrounded him. And Hussein radiallahu anhu, he was saying, Sharibatul ma. He said, Sharibatul ma. He said, give me some water. For what will you do on the day of judgment? And when you will come to my grandfather and you will ask him for water on the Hawthi Kothar. What will you do on the day of judgment? And the narration mentioned that the scene was so touching that many of the kufan, they took a step back. Until Shimon said, what you waiting for? Finish him off. And can you imagine the scene? The family, the women folk of Hussein radiallahu anhu, his wife, his daughter, his sister are all watching this. And they set upon him like vultures and they struck him 60 times. But it didn't finish there. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu said that Allah has a certain station for people. And often they cannot attain this station through their own deed. So Allah puts them through trials and tribulations. And then one of the Kufans, they grabbed his head and the other one removed his head from his body. What head was this? What head was this? This was the head what the Prophet ﷺ would kiss. This was the head which would lie on the chest of the Prophet ﷺ. This was the head which would lie on the lap of the Prophet ﷺ. This was the most beloved head to the Prophet ﷺ on the face of the earth at that time. And then they took the women folk of the family of Sayyidina as captives. And when Zainab radiallahu anha, the sister of Hussein radiallahu anha, she walked past the bodies and they beheaded every single one uncontrollably. She started to be saying, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, Sallallahu alayka malaikatu sama, Hadul Hussein bin Ara, Muzammilu bin Dama, Muqatta'u al-Adha, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, Inna banataka sabaya, Wa zuriyataka muqattala. She said, Oh my grandfather, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Oh my grandfather, may the angels of the sky sell salutations upon you. This is Hussein lying in the battlefield and lying in the battlefield. Today his shroud and his clothes are blood. And his limbs have been cut. What they did is after they killed Hussein, they made horses trample his body. He said, oh my grandfather, today your daughters have become captive. And your progeny has been killed. And the Kufu mentioned that even many of the soldiers, when they heard her say this, they lost control and they began to cry. And Allah didn't even give these people the tawfiq to bury Hussein radiallahu anhu until the Bani Asad came and they buried the bodies of Hussein radiallahu anhu. And when the Kufans found out, they set water over the body, over the place where the bodies were. 
And then one of the Bedouins from the Bani Asad, he came to this place. What was this place? This place was Karbala. 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 Karbala.